Molly vests or tactical vests are a style of vest that is exterior instead of the more traditional underneath the shirt with all of the police officers equipment around the waist on the belt. So is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? It is becoming a more common thing for sure, except in Toledo, where the current chief is now removing those styles of vest because he says it's too intimidating. It's too militaristic and we're peace officers. I'm going to show you this news clip from uh, Toledo News. Watch it. And then on the back side of that, I will give you my take. We're not soldiers, we're peace officers. Toledo's chief of police has told officers they can no longer wear these Molly tactical vests. The order went into effect February 1st. It's an exterior vest carrier that all of the officer's equipment is stored on the outside of the vest. Tasers, ammunition, flashlight, radio, possibly a knife. In my opinion, that looks too much like a military soldier. The chief is big on community policing. Picture this, two six foot three big strapping policemen are in a house and there's a five year old child there, you know, in the scene. And they see these guys with all of this, you know, the tasers and everything else on the vest. It's intimidating. And the last thing we want to do is intimidate people. The past four police classes have been issued new bullet resistant vests. Some officers don't like the new order. They claim the old vests help to eliminate back and hip pain. I know a big, a big concern for the officers is with the Molly vest, it takes all of the pressure off of their back and their hips. Well, the new solution comes with a built in suspender system that clips onto their bell keepers that does the exact same thing. So I think he's uh, made a, a good attempt on addressing the, the health issues. Michael Haynes says the officers are retraining to get used to having their equipment back on their belts. You know, it may be a little off-putting off at first, but I think that uh, hopefully uh, within the next little bit, we can kind of come to some sort of agreement. Uh, at least a conversation about it and maybe reopen up. In the meantime, this is not a union issue and the chief has a message for his officers. What it comes down to is that there are some young officers on this department who have never been said no to before. And they have to understand that I'm the chief of police. I make those decisions and I make those decisions based on the citizens that we serve and them themselves. So this is going to be something that they're just going to have to learn to live with. All right, so a few things stand out to me. First of all, the idea that it's too militaristic, that we are peace officers, not soldiers, is actually irrelevant. It's irrelevant because to do the job of a peace officer, to do the job of a law enforcement officer, actually has nothing to do with the appearance. It has everything to do with the character and ability of those officers. I think in our culture, this extends to sort of like uh, groomed facial hair, tattoos, that sort of a thing. And of course, there's certain standards for professionalism, but that mostly comes from our attitudes and our approach to people, not our appearance. I'm not saying go out there and look like a soup sandwich. I'm not saying to not take pride at all in your appearance or to be unkempt. I'm just saying that it is the it is not the big difference between a soldier and a law enforcement officer doesn't come from the appearance. And to get caught up in that is to miss the point. Another thing he brings up is an intimidation factor that, for example, a five-year-old uh, sees magazines or other equipment on the front of the vest, and that could be intimidating, scary, you know? Uh, why would a magazine at the bottom of a Molly vest moved three inches lower to the belt make a difference in intimidation. First of all, that is a complete cop-out because there is no difference. The same items are all clearly visible to anyone looking at the officer or looking at the equipment. And if that's what they're focused on, they're going to see it, whether it's on the waist or whether it's on the vest. The difference being in weight distribution. Now, I don't wear the the so tactical vest, Molly vest. I don't wear that because I just don't like anything on the chest for when I'm going hands-on with someone. That is my preference, but I don't think that to have it is inherently uh, somehow intimidating than not having it. And if it saves someone's back, I don't have back problems, but if it does save someone's back and they uh, can produce better 
They can perform better as a police officer with that and they stay healthier. It seems like the long-term benefit of that far outweighs any ignorant false perception that there's some intimidation factor going on with such a vest. And lastly, just a point that I noticed about a leadership. The chief is talking about how he's the chief. And so that's where the decision comes from. Yeah, we know that. And I don't want to take a deep dive into this. I don't know this guy personally. I've heard from guys that this seems to be out of the norm for him, that, that there's a, there is a sense of respect for this guy. But at the end of the day, anytime you have to assert your position as a leader and not your influence – there's probably an area of weakness that you need to consider. How can I influence people to move in the direction that I think we should go as a leader? Not how do I force them to do something because I said so. I, I'm, I'm just a nobody, essentially, like when it comes to the police world, a, a lowly patrolman. So, you know, take my word for, for what it is. I'm, I'm not in the, the realm of police administration. I'm just saying that as a rank and file person, I follow influential people. I follow people... Uh, for their character, not for their position, not because they they bully me around with the stars or stripes on their uniform. That's counterproductive to me. And if there are valid reasons he believes as a leader that he needs to move his department somewhere, well, then move them there. Move them there with valid reasons. Move them there with a sense of purpose and mission, why, explain that, deal with that. And maybe you are behind the scenes and I just don't see it with these news clips. But just tossing around the weight of, of those things on the collar, it isn't enough. Those are my brief thoughts. What do you guys think? Let me hear in the comments. Thank you for subscribing wherever you're seeing this and following along with my content.